All right, what's up, everybody? I'm going uh, to make another video for you today. It's been a couple of weeks since I made one, so I figured it's time for another one. Uh, I'm going to be tying this streamer today. I've been calling it the Wiggle Wiggle Minnow. Um, it's basically a double articulated Arctic Fox streamer. Um, it's very lightweight. I cast this thing on a six weight all day. Um, it's got a very unique action. Uh, the head is pretty much flat, so it kind of it swims like a jerk bait would, like a bass jerk bait. Um, and, and this material I'm using is pretty special. It's it's Arctic Fox body hair. Um, it kind of acts like marabou, but it's more durable, and I, I just think it looks a lot better. But uh, this is how you tie it. You need a Arex hooks size four light stinger hook. NS122 is the model. I'm using a UTC 140. Bring it back to the point. Um, using a Arctic Fox body hair instead of tail hair. Um, you're going to clean out all the uh, longer guard hairs and the under fur. If you lick it, it makes it easier to tie in. We're going to do it tips fa facing forward or reverse tied. Put it right on top of the hook, work your way towards the eye, and back. Cut off the excess. Next you're going to use ice dub. For this use the same color ice dub as you're using the top color of Arctic Fox. I'm going to do a gray and white one today. I tie these in olive and white, gray and white, and black and purple. Those are pretty much three standard streamer colors. Um, they all work very well depending on water clarity, etc. So tie an ice dub midpoint of that clump, half out back, half in front, and fold this half back along with the body hair over it, just like that. Now this stuff does not want to work with you super well, so just be patient with it. Kind of caress it um, backwards and catch it with your thread. Just like that. And catch the hook shank. And now comb through it once or twice. Now, the reason I like to reverse tie it is you're essentially tying it in twice rather than once. And it's not going to pull out on you. Anyway, now continue with more ice dub. Form a dubbing noodle on your thread. This is more or less just to cover up the bare hook shank. Um, you can skip this step if you want. You're really not. It's not going to be visible um, until you catch probably two or three fish, and then it's going to start uh, dispersing itself off of the hook shank. <laughs> Which it's not necessarily a bad thing. Just gives it a little bit extra sheen in the water. So just work your way up. Leave a little bit of room up front for more fur. Um, next, grab some more Arctic Fox body hair. Tied in butt ends first. And cut off the excess. Next, you're going to want some white Arctic Fox fur as the belly of this minnow. Tie that in right on the bottom. Cut the excess off. Again, more ISO. Right on top, in the middle of the clump. Excess out, 
fold it backwards with the fur. Uh, I forgot to mention this part, this clump of fur needs to meet, the tips of that needs to meet halfway with, uh, to the back clump. If that just makes any sense at all, these tips are halfway of the tail. It just works with the body taper. Fold the bottom back and catch it. And now the tail is essentially done. Catch the shank and whip finish. Twice. Cut that off. You can press through it just like this. I like to use Deer Creek UV resins. Um, this is just more durability over the thread wraps. Plus, it smells delicious. It smells like Fruit Loops. Some people don't like it. They obviously don't like Fruit Loops. Anyway, it only takes couple seconds to cure fully and uh, it's going to cure tack free which is very, pretty important on this fly because as you can tell this arctic fox likes to just get absolutely everywhere so that's tack free now nothing's going to stick to it leave that in the vise you're going to use a shank for the body part so that is a 25 millimeter articulated fish line from flyman put that in take it out and put it back in Start your thread, close up the gap. If you own a regal and you tie with shanks, please let me know how the hell you do it. I love this vice, except when I tie with shanks. It is just so annoying and I don't know, I need a, be a better option. For using this vise with a shank. If I put a little glue on there, it'll help the thread stick. Um, you're going to want to go fairly deep down to close the gap off. Um, you want the gap between the thread and the back of the shank to be about the same diameter of the hook eye behind it um, keeps it from getting super uncontrollable next you're going to need this is a medium size color chenille in a pearl color um, this is important for the uh, the body taper of the fly um, it's a lot smaller than a standard size or I guess they just call it a regular UV polar chenille but the length of each individual fiber is longer than the ice stub you used on the back. Um, you're not going to be able to tell really when the fly is dry, like in a, in a photograph even, but this fly really shines when it's in the water and the body taper um, shows up in full effect um, as you strip the fly in the water. Uh, you can tell the head is the bulkiest part and it tapers to the tail which does not look any near that bulky in the water. Um, anyway, this is probably my favorite streamer to fish. Um, it's got just an unbelievable action to it. Like I said earlier, the, the fox sort of looks like marabou would and acts like marabou wood because as you strip it and it stops, the hair keeps moving, but the hair, the, the fly is stationary. I think that's sort of important uh, for like a jerkbait style fly. Anyway, there's another clump of the Arctic Fox hair. Measure it, get it nice and flat. And 
and tips facing forward again. Okay, do the same thing with uh, white for the belly and put it right on top, catch it, and work your way back. Ice up. Okay, I'll brush this back over itself. it over itself and catch it. Alright, so that looks pretty good. Quit finish. Twice again. Thread, more UV resin. Doesn't have to be super pretty. I mean, all this stuff's gonna be covered up. Um, and usually I'd take a little bit more time than I'm doing for the video, but I'm trying to get it over with because. My cell phone kind of sucks and doesn't have large storage capabilities as a regular camera would. So, yep. You want better tutorials? Give me money so I can buy a camera. Anyway, now the third part or the head is tied on a size 1 Gamakatsu B10S. Start your thread a little bit behind the eye to leave room for a head. Um, A-Rex Hooks actually recently came out with a Predator series, and from what I've heard, uh, they are quite similar to these B-10S's, which I'm actually quite uh, intrigued about. I haven't gotten mine yet. I have some on the way, but since the B-10S is getting increasingly more difficult to find in bulk packages and when you need them, it's going to be pretty awesome to have something similar, plus the guys at Eric's are really awesome. Anyway, wrap the uh, bead line to this point around the hook, leave a little bit of tagging out the front, go up through the shank eye, and wrap twice loosely because you're going to have to manipulate this to get the size you want, which is just like that. Um, the goal here, since I'm not using any beads, is to make the hole fairly small. You want the diameter of the wire to be about the same diameter of the shank eye, if that makes any sense. You don't want it wiggling around too much on you. Um, and I got Arctic Fox fur all in my mouth. Pretty nasty. Fold this back and sit it down. Just like that. Now, usually I would add a uh, little glass or Pyrex rattle to this too, but I'm just going to skip that step and just tell you how to do it. Pretend my finger is the rattle and that's the end of it. You want the end of the rattle to be right in line with the end of that bead line that you just created. If it's too far forward, you're going to impede your action. If it's too far backward, you're not going to have any materials here and it's going to look pretty much like trash. Anyway, now take another clump of Arctic Fox 
and wet it and tie it in reversed again get rid of the excess again with the belly which is white Okay, more ice tub. It's important to note that when you're tying and designing and fishing streamers like this, that the most material is on top of the hook shank, just like this. Um, that's how you get it to swim correctly, or just one of the ways you get the fly to swim correctly, I should say. Um, it's important because of water displacement. The, uh, if you have too much on the bottom, it, the fly is going to want to roll on you. You could have virtually the same amount on the top and bottom because the hook point weighs the entire fly down if it's tied weightless. I prefer the most materials on top of the hook just because it, it swims upright the majority of the time I should say. Um, anyway, now that that's covered, it kind of forms a nice junction between the back of the head and the, the main body. kind of bulks it up a little bit as you can tell. Uh, next you're going to use a standard size polar chenille, tie that in. And bring it up there and bring it through forward and then I'll wrap this touch and turns um, I usually fish these on an intermediate sink tip line um, I use that on a six weight uh, Epic 686 fiberglass rod. Um, you could use an 8 weight if you want. It's just this fly is pretty super super lightweight. Um, tons of movement for being such a small fly. Um, there's a lot going on for relatively short profile, which is kind of cool. But. Uh, yeah, like I said, this is one of my favorite ones to, to tie and to fish. Um, it just looks really, really good in the water. Anyway. More Arctic Fox. Fox. And more ice tub. As you can tell, this fly is pretty much the same thing over and over and over again but that makes it less complicated it's still kind of time consuming and you have to be sort of precise if you will but uh, I think it's worth it it just looks really good when it's in water it looks alright when it's dry I guess but 
in the water is where the, the body taper really comes out and the fly just shines. Fold that back and catch it. And fold this back. And catch it. So now that that's all done, now we have to move on to the head. First, brush it all out. Make sure you get all the trap fibers out. Okay, the head on this fly. Man, I got fox everywhere. I got head on this fly. I use Bruiser Blend. This is the full length, not the junior. Uh, the junior is just not quite long enough. Um, but I'm sure you guys have seen this stuff before. If not, you get it at uh, store.flyfishfood.com. It's kind of in a uh, acrylic type dubbing. Um, brush it all out, get it nice and smooth, put about three quarters of the point of the clump. The trick to this is you don't, you don't want to use too much. Um, because the style head that we're creating here is not a a water pusher, it's a water cutter, if you will. Like we're trying to cut through the water, we're not trying to push it. Um, and that's how you get the, the jerking, side to side, swaying kind of action that I was looking for. Anyway, before I do the brush back Johnny King style head technique there, I kind of brush the uh, the bottom layer smooth. I don't really know why I do that. I just do. Um, and wrap your thread all the way to the eye of the hook, and bring this back. Fold it over itself, and brush it back. Catch the eye in front. Fold this one back. And catch it again. Now you're going to build up a little thread dam. This is going to force the hair to stay backwards. And drop some whips on there. Alright. Cut your thread. And now brush this all out until you have no more resistance with your comb until it's very smooth alright we're pretty much at that point now now I'm going to color this for that I use chart pack markers for the throat area just color a decent little amount I really like this bruiser blend because it takes color uh, very well I had a little darker orange sharpie about halfway down where I just marked just to give a little contrast and um, a little bloody gill type area. The top I'm going to make a little tad bit darker up here so add a little bit of brown and kind of blend it from there. Now while that marker's still wet you take your comb and if you brush through it like this the, uh, the colors just blend very very nicely and that's a pretty positive side of using one of these acrylic style of yarns or whatever that uh, Cheech and Curtis use over at Fly Fish Food it takes color just really well so that's what you're kind of working with there since the head's going to be flat I like to come in here and just flatten up that uh, that bottle thread that was securing that just flatten it down 
on eyeballs. I don't have anything on. Alright, I'm using some 8mm Deer Creek eyeballs. Um, this is a uh, tear mender. This is the best stuff I've used to, to keep these things on here. Um, I put it in a loon applicator bottle. But just kind of saturate the area that you want the eyeball to stay on. Put just a hair on the eyeball itself. And press it into place and hold it for five or six seconds um, that's going to grab very quickly okay now let's do this side saturate the area grab the eye put a little tiny bit on the eye just like that and place it on. Make sure they're nice and even and hold it to secure it. And you're pretty much done now. Um, after these are completely dry I will take some more of the Deer Creek UV Flex and fill in the hole and cure it. That kind of creates like a a hard like helmet if you will that sort of protects the eyes even further and keeps the shape how you want it so anyway there it is tie some up and uh fish them man good luck